sejam muito bem-vindos e muito bem-vindas para mais uma entrevista aqui do Imagens Cast. Quem fala aqui, como sempre, é o Manu. E antes da gente começar a trocar uma ideia com o nosso ilustríssimo convidado, eu peço para que você se inscreva no canal, ative as notificações, deixe o like já adiantado, nos siga nas redes sociais, se quiser e puder. Contribua com o meu trabalho via Pix. Nosso convidado não precisa de apresentações, ele é uma lenda do Heavy Metal, ele é vocalista de uma das grandes bandas do Heavy Metal atual e está vindo para o Brasil no fim de outubro fazer alguns shows aqui na América do Sul. Estou falando do Ralph Shippers, vocalista da banda Primal Fear. Ralph, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Thanks for Thank accepting my invitation. Thank you very much for having me. I understood Ralph, <laughs> because that's you, you people always say Ralph instead of Ralph. And I know this from Formula One back in the days. Everybody said Rubinho. And not Rubinho. Yeah. But because we got the rolling R going on, you got the R as a So I'm half. Exactly. I'm half man. <laughs> so, so are you a fan of, of F1? Excuse me? Are you a fan of F1, of Formula One? I was. So I have to admit, and I gotta confess, since Michael Schumacher is out, and also the oh, engines man. are being somehow like, they're not like, anymore they're like <laughs> and since then it's been a little bit boring but i understand the development so everything's fine sometimes once in a while i watch it yeah in, in brazil formula one used to be a big thing especially in, in the 80s and beginning of the 90s because of Ayrton senna and, and I, i was a kid that what was able to watch some of Ayrton senna's races Correct. and I, i watched the the, the the fatal race in italy when he lost His and life, what, unfortunately. What a great camp he was, huh? Oh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, are you in Germany right now? Yes, I'm in my home. Great. So, let's go straight to the point. You are coming to Brazil at the end of this month. How excited are you to come back here to Brazil? And what can we expect from the upcoming concerts? We're looking so much forward. I mean, I've been there this year already with Avantasia. But this time, of course, with Primal Fear. And we got the new album in the package. We got the Apocalypse album in the package, which we had no chance to perform live so far. So it's going to be interesting for the fans if we have a variety of songs. Of course, we can't please everybody. It's not so easy to pick a set list anymore after so many albums. But the people in Europe, we just had these shows. They really, um, really accepted the, the set list pretty much pretty good. So we're looking forward and we're We're pretty positive that the people in Brazil and in South America will also like it very much. Yeah, so that's a good question. How do you find in the band, do you find an agreement to make a set list to, to, to a tour it's after very, so many albums? It's very demo democratic. De democratic. It's a very democratic decision. But in the end, somebody has to say, stop, we do it this way. And, and that's exactly how we do it. Sometimes we have the final decision done by maybe me, me when I'm saying, well, let's do this song rather than this, because sometimes you have songs that are working in the rehearsing studio, and sometimes you have songs that don't work so well, not only because of the vocals, but sometimes also because of the arrangements and everything. But in the end, we found a good solution for everybody. And uh, like I said, the fans are going to hear new songs and old songs, and that's in the end what counts. Uh, the shows will promote the release of the Cold Red album that just came out. Uh, what can you say about this record in particular, Cold Red? Cold Red was written during the pandemic time. Like so many bands had the time to write. There was nothing else to do. We couldn't play live. So as musicians are positive persons, uh, I can speak for myself now. I was just sitting back and, and composed music and... Uh, You can hear a lot on the album, not only my ideas, but of course the ideas of everybody in the band because everybody was collecting. And in the end, we did it the same way we always do. We put everything together on the map and rehearsed this somehow. And, and everybody was focusing on the final, let's say 15 songs. And then we stripped down everything to 10 plus a bonus track. And uh, that's how we worked in the end in the studio, um, starting with drum recordings in the big studio like because you always record the, the drums uh, with the room and everything. And we also recorded the guitars, the rhythm guitars in the big studio with all the amplifying and so forth. And of course, you can do loads of stuff back afterwards and just reamping and shit. And uh, that's how we also proceed. I recorded my vocals here in my booth. 
because I like to work that way since 15 years now and I'm really good in recording my own vocals because I'm such a perfectionist. I, I never stop until I am satisfied. So uh, that's how we work nowadays. And it's working well. So yeah, during the pandemic and afterwards when uh, we finalized everything, let's say in December, January this, December last year, January this year, and then we went into the studio. All right. Just released uh, Apocalypse before, and uh, you didn't have a chance to play those songs here in Brazil yet. So, how much of the Apocalypse album and how much of the Cold Red album will be played in these upcoming concerts? Yeah, <laughs> we didn't have the chance to play it around the world because it was just closed down, like I said. So, we did no tour with the Apocalypse album. And we have, I think, one or two songs from Apocalypse and three, four songs three songs of the new album. So it's going to be four or five new tracks and then um, a best off of our back catalog in the end. So it's going to be 90 minutes packed with metal stuff and some, some oh, yes. as well, some ballads and here and there. Yeah. Great. Uh, for these concerts, the band will have Alex Jensen on the, uh, on the bass. Yeah. So for you, how did, Alex has adapted to the Cold Red songs. And how is Matt Sinner doing? Alex does a great job. He's a pro, so he's helping out in many bands. And uh, he's also doing cover bands and so forth. So he's a very good, and a, most important is, is a very nice person. That's what is really f also very important for us, that somebody fits as a person. And I mean, Tom and Alex have, have been friends for years because they do oh, the cover nice. band. And um, and of course we know each other from the scene as well. So we, and now after the tour, even more, everything's fine. Really, we have a great relationship on the road. We have a fine, nice feeling. But of course, we all miss Matt too. So in the end, uh, yeah, we, we, everybody's waiting until he's getting better and he's he's on a very good path. He's working very busy on his health now, going step by step. We we, we said, Matt, Matt, don't rush. You, it's everything's fine. As you can see, we're settled. With the, with the shows and everything, but of course everybody is craving to have him back on stage. I mean, like I said, we have we have this great feeling on tour now, but it would be also great when Matt is back, of course. Oh yes, all of us. This is what all of us hope for Matt to for him to take his time yes. and get better as soon as possible. Can't well, wait to see him well, on the stage. You know, thank you very much. Health is always the first, and uh, that's what we we are patient and we're waiting for. All right. Ab about Code Red, one of Code Red's songs is called Cancel Culture. It's a great song and it has a great lyric that talks about a very actual uh, 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 topic. You know, even though the inspiration for this song is pretty obvious, I like to hear from you what went into writing those lyrics. Yes, actually, this is for me. So I just sat down and really wrote down what I honestly think. And uh, because, I mean, it's not so actual. It's been decades since the internet exists that people yeah. don't, do not respect each other anymore, like just writing and bashing people anonymous without any, you know, so, so fucking, sorry for swearing, but it's really covered to sit there with a synonym and write stuff about other persons who, have, who don't have a synonym. You know, it's respectless. And I think this certain level of respect it has it's really went down over the years and you can really feel it now in society what this does with the people it's only black and white there's no more really um, gray area or even maybe more colored area where you respect another opinion saying yes i have a different opinion but i respect your side and maybe i can reflect a little thing a little bit of what you're thinking and that's a little bit what i miss you know i do not have to agree to everything but I, um, I pay respect for another opinion and do not bash the person, do not cancel him, her, whatever, you know. And, you know, that's that's what I'm missing nowadays. And so many other things like uh, jealousy and hate. So that's all written down in these lyrics. And I knew there's going to be people, oh, my God, you know, and it's really happening. What the hell? Keep out of politics. Well, it was not even politics. It's, it's just an opinion. And it's just my feeling of how people are behaving and, and are... Uh, how they handled each other as persons, you know, and this went down the drain, in my opinion, but it's only an opinion, too, so. 
and I agree with you. Uh, yeah. It's really easy today to cancel someone, to press a button up from your computer to say, oh, you're a piece of shit and being disrespectful. Yeah. Do you think that technology has played a part on this? Because back then, when we didn't have this, this all of this technology, we used to treat people from, you know, person yeah. to person. You used to respect more. And now we're kind of in a comfort zone with internet that we just send yeah. people to shit and, and, and you know, don't yeah. respect anyone. So many good things with the technology, but Absolutely. of course, there's also flip side, exactly what we are talking about. And as soon as you talk about, everybody says, "Oh, you're whining, whatever." Oh my God! No, it's just really. I mean, uh, it's really a pity what, that people do not have respect to each other anymore, and that everything is so really so hard and so harsh all the times, without being somehow. Yeah, it could be somehow, but I have another opinion before I just swear and hate and, and just really, um, what's the name of it? Uh, I do not want to bash a person, how you call it, uh, offending, and I got it. Yeah. You don't want to offend all the time, and, and, and that's what I really hate. It's, it's, hate is the wrong word, what I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how about the repercussion of this song in particular? Uh, has the fans supported you? And as you said, there are some fans that are saying, oh, you shouldn't talk about politics. How yeah. do you deal with those kind of fans? Yeah, I mean, 99% support yes. the, the fact behind it. And of course, there's always this 1% who's bitching about everybody and everything. We're not even talking about any politic, you know, it's just a situation. It's not even, it's got nothing to do with the actual war situation here in Europe. It's really, it's about everything. It could be every war, it could be every every guy in the internet, it could be everyone in the end. To just maybe trigger per people to think a little bit what they're doing, you know. Great. And this song is a very uh, fast song. Cold Red has some of the band's fastest song, and this is incredible from a band that has been on the road for over 25 years. You're, you're not slowing down. Is this a trend for the upcoming records to keep speeding up? <laughs> yeah, never say never. I mean, we, right. always, we always want to keep this fast things going on as long as we can, you know, so it was always depending. I mean, but, but Michael is such a great drummer, he could easily play everything, you know, in the end. And when it comes to hate in terms of the uh, hate of, of, of uh, melodies it's up to me to say maybe i should calm down a little bit now in terms of playing live it's not so easy anymore of course it's not but i do my very best and i think i still do it well <laughs> i do pretty well and next question is about your vocals you have a very unique way of singing and mm -hmm. many young singers many young metal singers are inspired by you so do you have any vocal routines that maintain your voice so powerful and healthy over the years with an aggressive singing singing style like like yours yes i mean i have my little tools what i use on tour like bubble machines and straws and, and so forth i do the maintenance thing and i need I do need to warm up my voice because it's very, very important for me because uh, like coming back to Formula One, if you have a Formula One car going for 12,000 rounds per minute in a second and without warming up, pff, the engine will yes. blast. <laughs> and it's the same here. When I go on stage and do those screams, I have to warm up, of course. And I also, I'm also cooling down a little bit. Uh, I think there was this topic out there a month ago um, about vocalists warming up or not warming up, and everybody's unique in the end, Manuel, because everybody, every every voice box is different. And if somebody can do it without warming up, hey, it's great, love it, it's uh, nice, great for you, nice. But I have to warm up, and that's what I do. So I'm lucky after 40 years now screaming. I mean, even longer. I mean, I started when I was 15, 14, 15 already, sing along and belting out the priest songs. <laughs> <laughs> And um, but now it's really a long time, and I'm still very happy. But I can feel a change, of course, like everybody, and that's why I need to warm up and do my maintenance. Right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your career. You were part of Gamma Ray on your first three albums, and I would like to know at the time what the songwriting dynamic was like between you and Kai, 
and if it was very different from the primal fear process, especially with Matt in it. Yes, it's very. It was very different because I was a kid, <laughs> and I came to Time Place, and, and and of course I was a member of songwriting in Time Place as well. But when I combined, when I did the thing with with Kai, he had so many songs already finished. But that's he. We recorded a demo where he already had all those songs songs uh, written. And I was just joining in. And of course, at the very first album, there are two songs of mine. One is called Free Time and, and Mr. Outlaw, I remember. That was my ideas. But really, 90% was written by Kai back in the days. And after, you know, it was still the time where we had no machines like now, internet swapping MP3 files. It was not possible. So I had to go up to Hamburg to write. And in the end, that was, that was the point why... Mm, it was a. It was one of those points why we split up because they wanted me to move to Hamburg because we had to compose the next album and I was not able because I still had my nine to five job and said, guys, I can't do this for this amount of money. I can't live and so forth. It was, and it was a difficult time, but because the, the guys started to sing their own songs, I was doing this application for Judas Priest, but that's another story. So everything was com was coming together at the same time and then there was this discussion where we sat together that we can't continue like that you have to move to hamburg and then i said no i can't and that's how we uh, went apart but in the end we're after months everything was sorted out again i mean kai is such a wonderful person and also also the other guys of gamma ray Everybody can speak to each other when we calm down and say, hey, let's sit together. We do it. We, we are not together anymore, but we're friends and that's OK. So that was the case. So now we came from songwriting to the split of Gamma Ray. But in the end, coming back to the question, <laughs> I was contributing songwriting, but not, not as much as I do now with Primal Fear. And uh, in primary, everybody is invited to write, so it's the same. So, so uh, when whenever an idea or whenever a song fits perfectly into primal fear, even an idea, and we work it out together, uh, then we of course uh, recording it. Uh, you've participated in a Gamma Ray celebration show, right? Anniversary show. Uh, for you, what was it like singing with Gamma Ray Kai Hazen again? was just already great in the rehearsing studio. <laughs> of course, we rehearsed only once before that show. And uh, it was just really, wow, skipping back like 30 years was just amazing, you know. And also Frank does a great job in Gamma Ray, the singer. So we had a great time on stage and, and uh, it was a great teamwork and, and a great team effort as well. And for me, it was just like really flying back to all those beginnings in Japan and, and, and also Europe. We did so many uh, shows with, with Gamma Ray. It was just great. Yes, I loved it. Yeah, it brought back a lot of memories, I think. Uh, looking back to this beginning with Gamma Ray, what was the relationship uh, with the fans like? There were many comparisons between Gamma Ray and Halloween and between you and Michael Kiske. As you say, you were just a kid. How did you deal with, with that? Always positive. I mean, Michael is younger than I am, so I was there before. <laughs> 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 we're good buddies. I mean, hey, everybody in the business who is who has talent and who has uh, achieved something is a very down-to-earth person because I think always people who are people who who do, do not have to hide anything or whatever, are down-to-earth people in the end. And I spoke to so many. There was not many who behaving like assholes or whatever. There was just really 99% polite and wonderful persons. And this is also with Michael. So never a word of disrespect. And the same from his side, never a word this, of disrespect to, to me and also to Kai and everybody in the business. Also to Rob Halford, Jeff Tate and all those names, you know. So. I, what I can say is really that, and that's coming back to the big word family, where we stick together somehow because everybody knows how it is having problems as a vocalist. Everybody knows how it is to be on a high as a vocalist, you know, but there's always a way down and always a way up. So always stick to your roots, being polite and not play a role or 
somehow not somehow behave like you are hiding something or whatever. I mean, be just honest. That's the most important thing. And that's what I learned with with Michael and Kiske as well when I got to know him. Of course, the, the, those comparisons were there at the beginning of Gamma Ray and the press said, well, it sounds so much similar like, like Michael, but I sung the way before. Like I said, and yeah, but anyway, they were more successful with, with Halloween. And of course, Bravo, they did a great job. And Michael was just really fantastic as a singer still is. So, well, there was a, just a little bit, maybe this competition thought, but in a healthy way. You know, ah, he sounds really good, huh? you know, but yeah, I like it, you know. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, we all know that you've always been a big fan of Judas Priest. And when Rob Halford left the band in 1996, if I'm not mistaken, you, you were on the list of possible replacements. What was that experience like for you? Uh, did the band or the band management has contacted you about auditioning? And for a Judas Priest fan, like you what it was like to to be on, ex on an experience like that first of all before i answer i know this is going to be a headline clickbait ralph shipper states that he was whatever you know but you have asked me the questions right so you are okay <laughs> it's my fault <laughs> you're, my, you're my witness that i don't come up with this on my own so anyway i'm answering questions and that's now it is Coming back to sure. the cancel culture story, uh, this is the same thing. People are being asked questions and musicians are answering questions. They, they don't come up, Ooh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm frustrated and I want to talk about this time and that time. No, it's just being asking a question. Absolutely. Okay, just to make this clear. Yes, I mean, Priest, I never thought there's going to be an answer anyway. I sent a tape of Gamma Ray and they liked it because it was that way uh, my old drummer Edgar Patrick from Tyrant Pace he called me up and said hey priest is looking for a vocalist you have to apply because you can do it yeah and I said well yeah I can try but they maybe would never take me and I'm in Gamma Ray anyway so I sent the tape and of course then the, the answer came I got st still have the letter up here on the wall uh, with the answer that wow. they're, that they're interested and I should send a video I sent all my videos for the, the heading for the East uh, uh, with uh, with Gamma Ray. I, uh, I sent there, and um, they were they liked it. But of course, it was a difficult situation for them. I can't speak for Judas Priest, not at all. But I knew it was not easy for them after Rob. I mean, I mean, fill, filling those shoes of Rob. It's, anyway, you can't. You never you never filling shoes of of, of an original singer. And uh, that's what I always knew. But I was on the short list and I was happy about it. And of course, then I got a little bit impatient and asked uh, what's going on. And now it's been two years. And yeah, you have to wait until we come up with, uh, we will promise you, you're going to be invited for rehearsals. But it, it never happened. Because then they got the tape from, from Tim. Uh, I think it's come. It would came from from Scott Travis somehow. I read about it. I didn't even know. We were talking about it later as well when when we met. But in the end, uh, they heard Tim and they immediately got him because he's did a great job. I mean, Tim it was amazing. Did, he did a great job, and and that's a perfect fit. So I was, of course, again, I was waiting, you know. But in the end, <laughs> in the end, yeah, fuck, he's great. Uh, so he got he got the gig, and that's that's great for me as well. And I, I was frustrated at the beginning and said, well, that's it, no Gamma Ray anymore, no Judas Priest. Now what 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 am I doing? Maybe I quit. But that was just maybe a, a month, and then when I sat together with Tom, uh, Matt, and uh, they were recording a studio album for Sinner, I sung some choirs. And then they asked me, hey, what's up? You can't see, sit around doing nothing as a vocalist. Let's write some songs just for fun. And then we did this four-track demo. And JVC Japan was waiting for ideas for myself. They, they wrote me, hey, Ralph, whenever you got something, send it to us. We, will, we want to sign you. And that was a great start. I sent, I sent the songs and we got the record deal immediately from Japan. And then in Europe, the competition started in between the record companies to sign us. And that's also, that was a great start of Primal Fear too. And here we are. Well, great story, man. Uh, well, you sang, you did guest vocals on Avantasia's latest album, 
So how did Tobias' invitation came about? The, the idea was years ago already, and I remember we were just about to go on tour with Primal Fear. And he was asking me already through to Akim. Akim is our uh, live mixer. He was working for us many years for Primal Fear. <coughs> Apologies. And, and he's also working for Avantasia and Ed Guy. And then uh, uh, Tobias came to Akim and said, hey, can you ask Ralph? You can do something. And it was exactly one day before we, were, we left for tour. So it did not happen years ago. But I think he always had in mind, already had in mind many years, um, I got to do something with Ralph as well. And then he got this song, The Wicked Rule the Night. And he was uh, just thinking about my voice. That's what he always does. He always, he's got the talent of choosing songs with and, and fitting the voices into it, right? And that's exactly what happened. And the timing was also perfect. It was, it was about post COVID time still. And, uh, I had the time to do it and the result everybody can hear and then he asked me uh, if i want to do this live so, oh yeah <laughs> why not try michael is also is very busy with halloween so i sung the halloween the michael kiske parts in avantasia too and i sung uh, the wicked rule the night the song i i have on the record of avantasia it was a great great thing and always ha had great times and meeting the other guys from avantasia such a great big family everybody like i said before down to earth people nice wonderful persons no matter of how many uh, uh, success they had in the past or not it's just really amazing great and in the last edition latest edition of, of the uh, summer breeze festival here in brazil avantasia played the song sign of the cross yeah and you've sung the part that was originally done by Andre Matos, did you get to know anything about Andre, and did you knew uh, how much how much important this song is for the Brazilian audience? As I mean, it's a sad story, as we all know, and I got to know Andre many years before already because he's been long in the business. We've been long in the business. We met before. What a nice guy! I can only repeat myself. Also down to earth and wonderful person. Yeah, I mean, I understand the background, but I mean, Tobias was choosing the parts and I wasn't the guy picking it. So in the end, I just tried to do the best I can, like always. And it was, it, I think it was also the case in uh, Reach Out for the Light. And uh, yeah, I think that was also, I, I got also Andre's parts in the end. Yeah, It was great, man. Congratulations. <laughs> great, great. Uh, Ralph, to, to, to finish this interview, uh, as I said before, you have a, a unique kind of way of singing it, um, that is very well known in heavy metal. When we think of Ralph Shippers, we straight think of that uh, traditional German power metal. And sometimes it's even hard for me to imagine that metal icons like you listen to another type of music outside of heavy metal. But when I stop to think for a minute, I come to the conclusion that maybe this is not the case and maybe, yes, you listen to different things, different stuff. I do. I love pop music. I love, you know, different kinds of, of, of music. So even people who live metal in an intense way like you do must like something outside of heavy metal. Am I right? So if so, tell me which non-metal artist do you enjoy? There's no particular artist. I mean, I've, I'm listening to everything with, with great melody and feeling behind it. Like all starts with classics sometimes. Like I like soundtracks of mu movies as well. And I like, I like ballads with loads of emotions going on, violins and, you know, and cellos and mellow stuff. And that's what I really also like. So I'm listening to almost everything. Apart from <laughs> that's not my kind. Of thing. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's got also the the right to be there. So in the end, everything which is successful has got to be has the right to be to exist. <laughs> and I find the words. But in the end, that's not what I always listen to. Like I said, I have this different mellow stuff going on, and there's no particular artist. None of them is coming to my mind right now. Maybe. When I'm 10 minutes later after the interview, oh, I should have said that name or that, but now I don't, I don't get any name. 
Okay. Uh, I think this is it, Prof. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate. It. So, time is yours to leave a, a last message to your Brazilian fans and invite them to Primal Fear's upcoming concerts. Cool. Oi, Brazil! Eu house shippers. Oh, okay, that's it. Anyway, thank Great. you <laughs> for that you're coming to the shows. I heard the ticket sales are going well, and we're really looking forward to go there again and have a good time with you. Great, great. I'm going to finish in Portuguese, ok? Pessoal, essa foi a nossa entrevista com o Ralph Shippers. Espero que vocês tenham curtido bastante. Se vocês gostaram, deixem um like. Não deixem de se inscrever no canal, ativar as notificações, nos seguir nas redes sociais. Quem quiser e puder contribuir com o meu trabalho via Pix e aguardem as próximas entrevistas. Beleza? É isso aí. Falou. <música>